All this is Dr. Mobeen Sayed from drbeen.com. Welcome to one more show. So today, once again, we have our favorite Paul Bork. He is a BS Chemical Sciences. He is a lawyer. He is an MBA and he is a black belt in Six Sigma as well. So Paul, welcome. Thank you very much, Mobeen. MBA. And so shall we go over the stats? So Paul, welcome. Thank you very much. And so shall we go over the stats? Can you echo here? I saw the echo, so I'll start muting myself. Can you echo here? All right, we're back. Sorry about the technical issues. So, uh, going forward here, uh, let me. We're back. Sorry about the. So, uh, going forward here. Turned off the mic I had, or speaker. Maybe that will solve it. So, all right, uh, here we are, uh, February 25th. The first thing I want to talk about is to take a look at what we showed with the UK. And we remember we had the uh, separation from the UK of the cases that we didn't see in the other countries. That's still continuing. You can see the uh, death, you can see the rate here for the... Um, Hospitalization, the slope of it is way different than up above. And when we take a look at uh, Germany, there I pulled on my speakers all off. Hopefully that solves it now. Okay, so uh, Germany, we have the shape sort of similar. In, it, in the United States, we have the slopes or the, the shape of the curves the same. And in uh, Israel, we had the slope the same. And in the UK, we still have the uh, separation occurring from uh, what we had seen before. Next slide. If we take a look at the non-COVID attributed COVID deaths, so these are the people that uh, the UK is counting as dead 28 days after a COVID uh, positive finding and taking a look at their death certificates, what percentage of them, um, you know, where, where they came in. And we see heart disease is up a bit, uh, cancer, COVID was as an asterisk because it wasn't counted as a cause of death here before, oh, so these are the, their, their, their total deaths. And coming down and we have the, so the question is, are we getting a lot more deaths because people aren't going into the hospital? You can see some of these are coming up. If I go to the next slide that I have here, I calculated the percentage increase uh, uh, for the, uh, excuse me, this is, this is taking a look at the death increase between 2020 and uh, 2019 in the UK uh, based on age. And if we look at the percentage, we have uh, roughly 115, 65s are down to 110 basically, back up for the 55s, the 45s, 35s, 25s and 15 are all about 120. And for the five and unders and for the one to four, we have about a hundred, uh, so it has, hasn't had been much of a change. And it may be that the one through 14s are staying at home and haven't really had any change, but the rest we're seeing an increase in the uh, death rate uh, compared to what it was in uh, 2019. The next is the continued comparison of the COVID symptom tractor with the uh, reported cases. And you can see we have the nice double curve coming down and with the um, and the, the official rates uh, don't show that at all. And so we continue to have this disagreement. Next, I pulled off the um, 
report from the Office of National Statistics in the UK. And again, here we're seeing more of a cur curves uh, in the uh, infections is, is following the official curve. Hospital admissions doesn't show the double hump that the COVID symptom tracker is getting. It may be that it's just a little delayed. It may be that there's something else going on. And the deaths seem fairly regular. There's a little bump up here. And again, that might be from it. Social distancing uh, as measured is coming down from about uh, 90 down to 35. So there's been a huge decrease. 99 and a half percent of adults, uh, they find antibodies at whatever level they're looking at. I don't know what it is. And uh, they haven't done anything to correlate it with an effectiveness. It's just whatever the test will find. And about 82% have gotten the third vaccine. They moved from the double vaccine to, which is uh, over 90% in the UK, and looking at the um, uh, triple vaccine. And now the next one is also from the UK. These are the percentage of deaths, which is the 28 days following a COVID uh, uh, infection with the uh, um, PSR test. C CPR. Uh, and then when they take a look, what percentage of those are actually due to COVID versus some other? And you can see the rate is slowly coming down, but we're not having 50, 80 percent. There's not a, a huge drop. I would have thought this would be larger with the idea that uh, we have a lot of people in the hospital, at least anecdotally, that are uh, discovered to have COVID rather than going in for COVID, but we're not seeing a huge change here. Uh, over the time. And it actually in June and, and the summer, we seem to have a lot more of it, but this seems to be relatively flat. The next slide is uh, pre-existing conditions for uh, people who have uh, died in the UK. And it'd be really good if they had a similar tree on this uh, other side that showed the prevalence of these diseases in the population. But we don't. So the fact that 20% of the people uh, have diabetes, it's 40% of the population, 10% of the population, it makes a world of difference what conclusion you could draw. And the same thing for the rest of these. No country has really reported their underlying rates in a way that someone can really draw a conclusion to see if there really is a relation. We just hear that, oh yeah, the comorbidities are really high. Well, we had a pandemic of diabetes and hypertension that was undiagnosed and some of these other things. So again, it would be good to get just a little more data on that. The next is the ONS is uh, looking at death rates between Omicron and Delta. This is something we had looked for for a long time and now they apparently have enough information that they're drawing conclusions, although with error bars. They're setting zero as what they thought Delta was, and overall Omicron is 67% lower. Males are 75% lower than females are only about 60 or 55%. This doesn't mean that males are uh, more protected with Omicron than females. It means that males were being hurt more with Delta, as I, as I remember. If you take a look at the age, up to 69, they're about 80%, 85% uh, lower. And it isn't until uh, they get over 70 that they're approaching 50%, uh, uh, but 55% lower. And see, this error bar is huge. So apparently, we're having some of the 70 year olds that are uh, really getting, um, are dying faster and some are not. But again, overall, the average is that there is, uh, Omicron is 50% less deadly for those over 70 than Delta, according to the Office of National Statistics in the UK. So I don't know if you can hear me. I think you turned your speakers off, but- Just a second, <laughs> let me plug it in. I pull my speaker out. Okay. What, what, I was, what was just going to say, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, this is it. a great data collection. Thank you very much. And I'm going to mute myself right away. There we go. Right. What, what, 
I was just going to say, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, no, this is good. great data collection. Thank you. You may have to unplug yeah, the speakers again. Right. There we go. Right. Well, well, I was just going to say, I don't know if you can hear me. So I turned that off again. I'll have to figure out what's going on, but uh, okay. I was very happy to see that. And I think it should be very reassuring to everyone that, you know, even if they're even if they're half wrong and the overall rate rather than 67 is only 30% less on death, it's still an amazingly good story. Amazingly good data to show what's happening. Here's the vaccine protection from the Office of National Statistics, January to June. The first line, the blue line, is the uh, unvaccinated. Then there's one vaccination, two and three you can't see. And we're seeing a huge decrease because of the vaccination. That was during Delta. If we go to Omicron timeframe from July to December, we can see that one dose and the vaccine don't seem to do much. Two doses do seem to make a significant difference and the booster brings it even lower. But again, if people are under age uh, 70, the rates are pretty low. But particularly if one is worried about myocarditis or has some other reason to worry about the vaccine, one can take a look at these numbers, talk to their doctor, and decide what is appropriate to do. Someone had asked for excess mortality to try to, since the uh, cases aren't being followed, but mortality is reported slowly. But I do have this for a lot of countries, and this is the uh, excess deaths from all causes compared to the projections based on the prior year. And you can see Mexico is way high. This is a 40% increase in death over what was expected. This line is 30, this line is 20, and the U.S. is a little under 20. And the countries come down, and this is zero, and you can see Singapore, Denmark, Japan, Taiwan, New Zealand, and Australia are significantly below that number of, of what was expected. They've had a decrease in mortality, and one can wonder why. My bet is they're not having as many auto accidents and other things because the economy is shut down. Here are the total cases, and you can see Mexico's total cases are reported here, not nearly higher than anyone else's. And Denmark and Israel are way up, Netherlands, France. And if we go back to look at the excess mortality, it's not just more cases. Something else is happening. Oh, I uh, wanted to say here, if you look, Australia and New Zealand have about a 5% decrease. And some of these countries fairly small. And the United States, a 16% increase. And Brazil, Russia, Iran, Mexico, very significant increase in mortality. Very unfortunate. And here are the, the current cases versus this, this prior was the total cases, and this is the current cases that we have. And so we look at this, uh, one of the questions is why is Denmark so high? Well, here's a, a report, and uh, Denmark has a majority of the BA2, and they have done some very good reporting. The doubling time for BA2 in Denmark was found to be about seven and a half days. They reported 7.7. The majority of the cases in Denmark and Qatar are BA2. Other countries are not seeing or reporting that. The US and the UK are in the 5 and 10% range, and the doubling time is, uh, lo is much longer. Uh, where is that? I think the doubling time in the US and the UK is supposedly about two weeks or longer rather than the seven days in Denmark. And I don't know of anything in the disease or any behavior that would tend to count for that, but that's what the data is showing. It may well be 
that the UK and the US aren't uh, keeping track of things as well as uh, Denmark is. And so the Danes have had a number of reports about BA2, and so I think we can find some information that people are very interested in here. The growth rate with people with the second and third vaccination was about 30% higher than the average. And the growth rate among the five to 17 year olds was 40% higher than the average for the Danish population. The medicines and the vaccines um, that have ability to help have ability to harm. So if someone changes how their immune system responds, that can be helpful or not. And we talked about some things that aren't found, uh, ADE and some other things that could cause trouble. And at the end of the day, uh, BA2 doesn't have to explain what it's doing. We have to run after it and try to figure it out. And so a question, can we determine if it's behavioral or is it vaccine driven? And they found only small regional differences in the, the various, I think there's five different states, regions in Denmark that were reported. And so that's telling me that you probably have some that are fairly um, uh, rural compared to others being more urban. And so since they're not seeing a lot of difference, that tends to tell me that it, it probably less likely to be a behavioral difference, or I would expect one or more of their five areas to have a significant difference in the rate. Next, these are the uh, weekly growth rate for BA2 and the weekly growth rate for BA1 that they had. And you can see you got a lot of numbers there and to try to help you, I've colored them already. I won't color them as we go like Dr. Bean does. But if we take a look here, um, the estimates, we have 84%, uh, 132. 142, 176% here for the, for the weekly growth rate. And we see a significant difference in the age. And the weekly growth rate for BA1, they had zero and 10% for their um, reported here. Time since vaccine, this, this is, I think, is fairly interesting. They had 120, uh, 118, 102, 90 for the unvaccinated. And so we're seeing a, a effect that could be related to the waning of the antibodies or the waning of the effect of the uh, vaccine. If the vaccine is actually causing harm, the waning of its effect would tend to uh, reduce the, the growth rate, the percentage versus the 100% for what they found in the um, for the whole country. So these are percentages that they're finding, okay? And so if we take a look here uh, and, and we normalize this, so we make this 100 and this one 100, uh, we get 98% where with the BA1, we had 96%. So we have better protection. Here we had uh, 91 and 60. 75 and 32 for the unvaccinated. So we're seeing a very significant difference here. Previous infection, um, 118 and uh, 96 for their growth rate. And here we had, uh, you know, here's 50% lower uh, with respect to someone who had a prior infection. And here it's a, an 80% uh, decrease. So we're seeing, you know, 80% 80, 80 protection from someone who had a prior infection uh, where BA1, we had a 50% protection. So we're seeing that the uh, BA2 is, seems to be responding to the prior infections and the vaccinations to uh, allow having a greater degree of protection, but still much less than uh, what we had thought before. Secondary attack rate, this is the homes. With BA1, they found there was a 29% uh, of the homes where one person got it, they had someone else get it in the home, and BA2, it's 39%, so that's 35% higher. And this is the greater infection that we're seeing, that we've heard about before. 
And the 35% higher is right in the middle of the 20 to 40% greater attack or greater um, uh, infectiousness. So next, if we look at the disease severity, they had 932 patients, not huge, but a large. They adjusted for age, sex, vaccine status, time from vaccine, comorbidities, and prior recovery. And they said they found no difference in the unvaccinated, singly vaccinated, fully vaccinated, or boosted in the disease severity. And they said no difference for the children, zero to two, who are not being vaccinated, I believe. They found no sex difference. But they did find that the BA2 people who got severely infected at a lower age, 40 on average versus 51. Then another thing that people are very interested in is what about reinfection with Omicron? And there's a nice study right here on that. And out of the 1.8 million Danes who have been infected with Omicron, 1,739.1% are known to have been reinfected. And that's defined as when between 20 and 60 days after the first PCR test, they had a second positive PCR test. They took a subset of that and did a, a, a greater analysis. And they had 47 that were BA1 followed by BA2. And they had a lower number of uh, cycle thresholds for um, the BA1 followed by BA2 versus others, and they had a 0.06 P rate. And if we talk about this, uh, different places have different probabilities that they accept. If I go to the physical sciences, they have a much higher number than we have in medicine or psychology. And the 5% is just an arbitrary number, but it's consistently used for medicine going forward. In the beginning of a pandemic, looking for effects, there's no reason that that's a magic number that needs to be followed. And I'm saying that for a reason that you'll see in just a minute. So they had, they took a sample of them and uh, they showed 71% of the 1739 uh, were considered reinfections. Okay. BA1 to BA2 reinfections were found uh, to be near identical uh, genetic structures. They're believing that maybe it was a residual infection, long, you know, long COVID, something like that. 11% falls out of their thing. And that maybe again, that might be long COVID. They didn't explain it in a way that I understood it. 18% of the sample of which they took from the 1739, seems they didn't have enough resources to do all 1700 were BA1 followed by BA2. All of them were young, most were below 30. 13% had completed the eligible vaccination program that they had. 80% for the population, 13% for those that had a BA1 followed by a BA2. And they took a look at the genetic structure and they found no evidence of a prior subset of BA2, of a particular subset of BA2 reinfecting. And again, they had the lower cycle. And I will give more detail about that. Okay, these are the first, these are the days uh, between the paired samples. If a reinfection was with BA1, they found on average it was uh, about 26 days. Reinfection from BA1 followed by BA2, they found it was about 36 days. The asterisk means not significant, about not above the 0.5 or 5 percent random. You know, they weren't able to eliminate the hypothesis of the 5 percent. Uh, uh, you know, 95% certainty for their tests, but it's still, to me, this is indicative that there may be a longer time between the reinfection of BA2 than BA1. And if BA2 is more infectious, this means something else is going on. <clears throat> Here is their little chart showing where the for the timing. So this spot came out here, this one went here. And so some are down, some are up, and 
overall it's a little a little higher and this these are the number of ct cycles for the 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 detection for the ba1 and the ba2 reinfection so ba1 had slightly lower ba2 had slightly higher but these are very very overlapping and this is ba1 to reinfection with ba1 and you can see there aren't nearly as many but we also have a much bigger difference in the number of threshold cycles. So it seems that one could suggest that BA2 is acting like it's a different virus more than BA1 coming in as being the same virus or almost the same. The next one, asking whether the reinfecting viruses are different than the first viruses. So. They took a random sample of the BA1 and the BA2 that they found during this time frame, And then they took the BA1 and the BA2 that were reinfecting someone and took a look to see. And this is in position 55. I don't know what that means. They reported position 55. And we see that all these dots are lined up for the BA2 and the ones that are reinfected seem to be different. And so, they said the probability here that these two groups are the same is much below 0 0.05. That's four times 10 to the minus eight. And looking at position 12, 552, we have a, a somewhat similar response. And again, if you look at the average here, and I don't know how these dots end up with that average, but I'm sure they calculated it right. But again, you can see the average is, is lower, but it's still within the error bars, but we have a very high number here if I'm interpreting it right. And then they took a third one, and again, we're seeing the same sort of thing, that apparently the BA2 that is randomly selected from their group and the BA2 that was found reinfecting seem to be a bit different almost as if someone uh, having been infected before uh, is uh, receptive to a different variant than someone who hasn't been infected, which is precisely what I think a number of us would expect. So a few more slides. The Danes had a death update and their death is 30 days Anyone who died 30 days after getting a positive PCR is considered a COVID death. And then they took a look at it and said this, the, the line here are their deaths. The yellow is the deaths that they said are unrelated to COVID, people who died with COVID rather than of COVID. The orange, they haven't gotten the death certificate yet to look at. The other orange is they got it, but they haven't validated it. And the red is they believe that the COVID caused the death. And so it looks like we're having a lar larger percentage of the deaths, the, the lower deaths that are occurring, being viewed by the uh, Danish as being people who died with COVID rather than of COVID. Now, changing focus a bit and looking at a different way. Uh, okay. Nope. There we go. At Omicron. This is from the next strain. And we have here a number of variant variations from the Wuhan version. And here we have time. And then their program, Artificial Intelligence, links them together and puts them in these categories. But they are really just uh, different genomic sequences. And they have said they found an estimate of 24 substitutions per year on average coming out. And that's this black line. And you can see the various variants coming up here. And then we started labeling them when, the, when um, who got started uh, trying to uh, become more relevant to the discussion, some might say, and others might say they're just trying to be helpful, but for whatever reason, they started part of the way through providing labels. And you can see that as we going forward, this is the uh, alpha, and then we have the delta versions here. We have the various Omicrons. There's three Omicrons, one, two, and this is an expanded view of just the end. 
And you can see that the Omicron is linked back all the way back here. Something happened and it jumped up. It's not derived from it. And other graphs will show it in a circle and show them coming out, but this is a time graph. And you can see, for example, this right here, this alpha came all the way from here. Something happened and it just popped up with a lot of variations. And these things occur all the time. And you can see from here, these are the uh, BA2 cases, the red ones, and the orange are the BA cases, BA1. And you see these are, are not related. They're coming from back behind. And now I ask you, if we see this line going up, going forward, is this line perhaps a little steeper? Are we having a lot more? Cases, are we getting a faster duplication? Because I don't know of any reason why the number of substitutions would be per year and not as a function of how many people got infected and replications that occurred. And so we may have a much steeper curve or this line can jump up and then continue, but it seems like maybe something's going on here that is showing that that, that did not occur during this whole other time. And again, this may be part of it becoming endemic, uh, but I believe that we're, we're seeing a way, an increase in the number of people infected. And if we take a look at the, uh, the, the case rate here for the world, you can see that we're seeing a significant increase in the number of infections. It's been fairly low all along here. And we go back, fairly, normal here you've got some in bumps up and down but it's fairly normal fairly straight just like these infections are fairly straight then we have a jump up and we had a jump up here in these perhaps going up now let me okay And we'll take a look at the net, net strain live. But here is Israel's uh, death for vaccinations. And you can see that the not vaccinated death rate seems to be jumping down here, very similar to what uh, Denmark said for the BA2 going in and that the vaccines not being very helpful. And... Uh, You, is you, are you seeing this next train? Yes. Okay. So let me, this world graph doesn't seem very useful to me, so I'll pull it out. So when it updates, it'll... Actually, Paul, no, I cannot see the next train. Before I do we that, see... um, they have on the bottom here uh, diversity over time, and I think this is the number of different variants that they're finding going forward. And you can see there, we're getting a lot more than what we had before. The worldwide stuff doesn't, the country stuff doesn't seem very useful. So I'm not going to use that. And I'll pull it over so we can see the right here. And I want to do this live so that we can see, you're st if we're still getting some cases here from the, uh... yes. So I'm seeing the Israel death deaths vaccine protection screen. One moment hasn't kicked in yet. Come on. So can you hear me? There it goes. Kicked in yet. Come on. So I'm seeing on the screen Israel deaths vaccine protection and not the other one. Okay. There it goes. So I'm seeing on the screen Israel deaths vaccine protection and not the other one. Okay. There it goes. So I'm seeing on the screen Israel deaths vaccine protection and not the other one. Okay. There it goes. Hello, Bambi. How are you? Now, 
Now you have it? Good. Okay. And so if I come back over here, we can see that these are uh, delta cases. You can see the under the clade, the third line from the bottom, that these are all delta cases. And we have some deltas being reported now. These are the um, Omicron. And you can see that we're getting in a bunch of places. And this is the BA2. And you can see some of the BA2s have a very, very high uh, number of There we go. See this one has this one here has over 90 changes compared to roughly uh, 50 here. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know, but we're seeing a lot of variation coming in, and this variation is not derived from the prior. These are jumping again, just like the Omicron came in from way back, and these are coming in the same way. We're not seeing a uh, not seen a, a progression like we saw here where cases where it seemed like they could say this one was derived from the one right before it and we could track you know who got infected and how long it was and and whatever and here we're seeing that these cases are coming from you know i don't know is this because we have another species that is infected rats or mice or um Deer, I know, have it, and are we getting a, a, an endemic a reinfection of uh, back and forth between uh, different populations? I don't know, but again, I thought I would share this. I found it very interesting to see, particularly with this rate going and becoming uh, significantly higher, if that's what's occurring, and it looks to me like it should be coming up about here, coming through that uh, something significant is happening. And I don't know enough about virology to, to have a real good guess as to what's occurring, but it does seem that, uh, um, you know, maybe we're having uh, threshold changes occurring. And once you've got a sh an, a, an overall shift, you've got uh, basically, as uh, um, Moveen was suggesting before, maybe even an, a new a virus coming in or a new label for it. And the question of when you decide which of these are significantly different to give it a new um, label and when it's a new variant and when it isn't, um, you know, those are decisions that have to be made and we really don't want to scare people, but there's a lot of new variants out there. And we're seeing again, uh, if I go, if I go back to the uh, slides that we had before, they're showing a much lower death rate and much lower serious illness rate. So these changes uh, should not be scary to folks. That's what I have to share. You may have to unplug the speakers. I would just quickly thank you and close and then we will see. Has it kicked in yet? Cool. So, yeah. so thank you very much, Paul. And I think it's going to repeat. You can unplug it whenever you like. And I would close and yeah. say bye. Thank you very speak. much for so the discussion. We are going to figure out headphones next time. So sorry about the glitch. Uh, Paul, thank you very much for being here. Cool beans, thank you very much. There was actually some very interesting data points. So we may have to actually redo this one. Uh, but in the meantime, Time. Thank you very much. There was a study that came out today from Switzerland. I'm going to prepare that study after this talk. And hopefully somewhere during the night, I'll come back live and discuss that. So if you can allow me for that preparation, the names, here is the comment that I need from you. For the live talk, there are two final names. Cool Beans Cafe Live. The problem with this name, it is actually liked everywhere on YouTube, on Patreon. The problem with this name is it may not be searchable. The other, and there are many good things about it. The other is Dr. Mubin Life. The simple and straight Dr. Mubin Life. Um, one, 
Hoon Bean talks more about the community and all of us together. Dr. Mubeen Life seems a little bit more individual individualized, but both are kind of Dr. Bean Dr. Mubeen Life is more searchable. So give me your comment. We'll create that today. And also we will see each other uh, hopefully in a few hours about that Switzerland study as well. So thank you very much for being here. And I will talk to you uh, later. There is an amazing link in the description, which is the discounted price at Dr. Bean, the discount that world has never seen. There, there is another YouTuber. Sometimes he talks about his discount as criminally low <laughs> discount levels. So anyways, it's a very low discount level. If you would like to get access to Dr. Bean's videos on our premium site, then you can use that. In addition to that, there are uh, links in the description for if you would like to buy me a coffee or uh, if you would like to use PayPal or become a patron. So once again, Paul, thank you very much. The, there were so many good data points. I think we need to redo this one with headphones on so we can interact and, and discuss as well. But this was great. Thank you so much. And cool beans, thank you. Bye-bye for now. You're quite all, all good. Bye-bye. Awesome.